All right, let's see. Ayla! Timber! <gasps> Who's that? See how different they are. Ayla! Hey! What are you guys doing? You guys wanna see how fast they are? Ayla! <laughs> go, 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 go! Oh, they're way faster than me. Really fast. <laughs> Good job, it's so fast. Wowee. They're barely even jogging. I know, I was actually running. So this one is Timber and that's Awa. Timber, oh, Timber's the male, Awa's the female. Um, these are wolf dogs, which means they're hybrids uh, between wolves and dogs. They came from a facility, sniff. They came from a facility um, that received a number of USDA violations and Animal Welfare Act violations um, over a number of years. And they were used as a breeding pair, breeding wolf-dog hybrids. Um, so they were used as a breeding pair um, and they weren't even on exhibit. They were just like behind the scenes as a breeding pair. We think they're around 10 years old, uh, so most of their life they haven't had much human contact, but they've come a long way since they've been here. One of the reasons that we have them um, is to talk to people about wolf dogs as a whole. I don't know um, if you guys are familiar with this concept, but essentially, like, for hundreds of years, hundreds and hundreds of years, we've domesticated man's perfect companion, right? A dog. And then, People have come in and decided it's not cool enough. And they've thought, let's, let's, you know, it's a good idea. Let's take us back hundreds of years. Let's go backwards and let's, let's put a wolf back in there. So then you get this animal that both cannot be released into the wild because they're, because they're bred in captivity. Sorry, I just saw like a bug and got distracted. Um, they can't be released into the wild um, because they're not natural in the wild. Um, and a lot of times they can't be most of the time, over 90% of the time. They can't be in people's homes because they end up being a risk to the people in those homes. Um, so their options are either be on display at a facility or be at a facility like this that's a sanctuary. And again, I said it in the Fox enclosure, there are not many facilities like this. So a lot of them end up being euthanized. Yeah, they're in this weird limbo, um, wolf dogs, and it's really sad. The other thing that we can talk to people about with these two ambassadors is that they came from a facility um, that wasn't doing great for them. They didn't have the resources to do great for them. Um, so their enclosure that they were in at that facility was one tenth of the size of their current enclosure here. <laughs> um, so they were in a much smaller enclosure uh, and they weren't doing a great job. And a lot of people ask me about zoos and are zoos bad and how do you know if uh, the zoo that I'm visiting is a good one. Um, one of the first things that you can look for that's really easy is to check if it's an AZA zoo, um, Association of Zoos and Aquariums, that's in the US. And so that means a couple things. One, it means that there's some animal welfare standards. They're not the best. Um, like it, it doesn't mean that they have excellent welfare, but it means that they're regulated by an entity uh, for animal welfare. So that's one thing to, that's one thing that comes with AZA. And then another thing that comes with AZA is AZA facilities have to donate a portion of the funds that they're making back into conservation. So AZA facilities are forced to do conservation work. Um, and that's what's important about zoos, right? Is, is conservation ultimately. So looking if it's AZA or if you're in Europe, EAZA, yeah. Um, that's one thing to look for. And then if it's not, AZA. In my opinion, all zoos are bad, but I can respect Maya's opinion. So technically, Alveus is a zoo. There's there's nothing separate. There's no legal terminology separating us from being a zoo and a sanctuary. 
Um, we just picked the name Sanctuary because of the stigma that comes with zoos, but Alveus is a zoo just like um, any other private zoo is a zoo. Um, rolling into that, we do an excellent job with animal welfare here at Alveus, um, and you guys can see that because we have so much transparency. Um, and there are a lot of private zoos that are not AZA that are doing really excellent work in animal welfare, and there are a lot of private zoos that are doing really not good work. So if they don't have an AZA accreditation, one thing you can look for, or red flags you can look for are, one, are they doing like cub petting, right? Are they doing like interactive experiences where you can pay to come in and hold a baby tiger or hold a baby chimpanzee, stuff like that, super red flag. Um, because when there's baby animal experiences, there's an influx of baby animals and there's not that many adults at that facility. With cub petting in particular, people will breed big cats to have cubs for cub petting. People will come in, pay for pay a ton of money to take pictures and bottle feed these baby cats, big cats, and then they get to a size where they're not safe for those experiences anymore and then they get sold off a lot of times to game ranches. Game ranches are big plots of land, a lot of times in Texas um, and in other places in the US, and people will pay to go hunt within that property. And so lions, tigers, whatever, are sold to game ranches. People go and pay to shoot on that property. And these juvenile big cats that were raised, socialized by hundreds of people and made a ton of money through these cub petting experiences who are not afraid of people are now put on game ranches and they're shot for, for big game and trophy hunting. Super, super sad. Um, so if there's baby animal experiences, that's something to look out for because where are the babies going once they're aging, right? That's one red flag I tell people to look out for. What's another one? Oh, if you go to the, if you, if they don't have any conservation messaging at the facility, like if they don't tell you what their status is in the wild, like if they're endangered or if they're least concerned or whatever, um, if they don't have any conservation messaging or education at the facility, it's probably just exploiting animals for money um, because the whole point of, of having animals in captivity at zoos and stuff like that is to aid in conservation efforts. So if they're not doing any of that, then um, it's probably not a great facility. Our game ranch is legal, that's absolutely vile. Yeah, yeah. Um, but so is cheating on your wife. It's also legal and also absolutely vile. Just because it's legal doesn't mean it's chill, you know? I'm going to the Bronx Zoo in NYC tomorrow. Is it considered a good one? I'm pretty certain Bronx is AZA um, and I've heard good things about it. Timber we were able to get DNA test results for. Chai, you're gonna have to remind me what his percentages were. He had gray wolf, <sighs> gray wolf, husky, um, German shepherd, and malamute. So he's 40% gray wolf. This one. Dude, what is going on? Taco Cub, thank you for the hundred dollar donation. Oh my gosh, crazy donuts today. Peach and Jess. This is the K900, cause it's a 30 by 30 foot building, get it? So this is uh, an air conditioned building. So there's AC in here, there are fans in here. Um, so, if it gets really hot, the wolves, ooh, I see a wolf. You can't see it because it's blown out, but it was right there. Um, the wolves have the option to come in here where there's AC, but they are afraid of coming inside. But apparently, 
they came inside yesterday. So, I don't know. I don't know. This glass was donated, by the way. Or not donated, it was discounted. But it's still super nice. They've been really, really nice to us. They've discounted a ton of really nice glass. So yeah, it is cooling down, but um, they have the ability to come inside if they want to. This is where their, their food prep is. This is a freezer full of meats. Um, little fridge, prep table. And then there are treats in here. You guys want to give them some treats? <coughs> Sorry. You guys donate a ton of treats um, via the PO box. There's like freeze dried chicken hearts up here, freeze dried egg yolk. Uh, this is freeze dried or chicken jerky tenders. They're dog treats. Um, viewers are super, super generous with our Amazon wish list. <laughs> our animals <laughs> have like the most expensive, most bougie excessive amount of like treats and toys and stuff ever because of you guys. Thank you so much. What the hell is going on? Strange Science, thank you for the $100 donation to Alveus. Strange Science has also uh, been helping us a lot with uh, one of our citizen science projects that we're starting up at Alveus. Um, so in addition to helping us for free <laughs> with all of that is donating too. Thank you so much. Insane donations today. Insane. Thank you. I got tweets. I got tweets for you. For you. Timber. Do you want? Do you want? <laughs> what the heck? Nuclear Rainbow, thank you for the $200 donation. Nuclear this was from Rainbow Nuclear Rainbow. $200 to charity. Wow. It's okay. Four, eight, fat man, he doesn't like Brian. Time. This is for you. It's okay, Timber. Timber. From Nuclear Rainbow. Oh, you got it. That's nice. Thank you for the $200 donation for you, Awa. From Strange Cyan. Huey wants up for the first time. <laughs> Yum. Shuan donated $5 to charity. Shuan, thank you for the five. Four I thank you. Yum. I only brought you one. Miss. Sorry. She said, what the heck? Hi, Timber. That's all. That's all. He said, but I smell it still. I smell it. Obviously, the other reason we have wolf dogs is to teach you guys about the ecological importance of wolves in the wild. Peach. Um, they're keystone species. Wolves are really important for regulating prey populations, which is ultimately really important for regulating plant populations. Um, if we didn't have wolves and didn't have predators to um, maintain deer populations in the wild, everything would be overgrazed um, and we wouldn't have plants. And if we don't have plants, we all die. Peach. So wolves are really important for that reason too. They're, they're also historically persecuted by farmers um, and hunters. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, that was kind of spooky. Yeah, I agree. Do they bite? Uh, they absolutely could. We have not been bit here, um, but we're also very careful and our animal care staff is very thoughtful about the way that they interact with them. I'm not running again. <laughs> it's too hot. But yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they're large canines, you know? Um, they're definitely potentially dangerous, just like any large canine. 